On Friday, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away at the age of 87, I believe. Um, and she had cancer for a very long time. And this news was uh, genuinely shocking, even if it's not necessarily surprising that someone who is old would succumb to a long time battle with cancer. It's still like it put a really dark cloud over the weekend, you know, not the best news to get on a Friday, um, not just because it's sad in general, but because of the political ramifications. And for that, there's a lot. Um, I don't even know where to begin. So. Obviously, the question is, what's going to happen now? Who's going to replace her? Will it be Donald Trump before the election? Will it be Joe Biden? What I do know is that Democrats are not up to the challenge, and I fear for uh, what's going to happen. In fact, I'm expecting the worst. Uh, I kind of feel as if Donald Trump replacing RGB is a foregone conclusion at this point, because I just don't think Democrats know what to do. Like, immediately after RGB died... We heard that her last wish was for the next president to fill her vacancy. And, you know, I see videos of Democrats like Elizabeth Warren talking about how we need to honor her last wish. Republicans don't care. I see the videos online circulating of Mitch McConnell talking about how you can't fill a Supreme Court seat during an election year. You know, this was back in 2016. I see videos of Lindsey Graham saying the same thing. And people are kind of trying to hypocrisy burn Republicans. And I get that instinct. But I need people to understand Republicans don't care. The ends justify the means. The ends justify the means. They have absolutely no desire to convince Americans that they're principled. They just don't care. Their goal is to make sure Donald Trump fills that seat. And there's no argument that you can make to Republicans that will, you know, get them to be persuaded or pull on their heartstrings enough. Like Mitch McConnell, he is a soulless ghoul, so you're not going to, like, make some argument that emotionally resonates with him. He doesn't give a shit. He wants to fill that seat, and he will do just that. And so what you have to do is you have to block them. If you are a Democrat, you pull out every single procedural trick in the book to stop them from doing this. Everything in your power, every tool at your disposal, you use that right now because democracy is at stake. And I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that. Democracy is at stake. We are looking at a Supreme Court going from a 5-4 to four majority to a 6-3 to three majority. That means they have a cushion. They have some wiggle room. Everything is on the table. We're not worried about Roberts being a swing vote any longer siding with the liberal justices, because guess what? Now they have another conservative there to back them up. So the situation is looking really, really grim. And what it seems to me is that the goal is to get the Senate to wait to confirm the next justice until after the election. Now, the election takes place on November 3rd. That's a Tuesday. So let's say Hypothetically speaking, Joe Biden does end up defeating Donald Trump and Democrats successfully delay this next appointment until after the election. Well, there's still some time where a lame duck president, Donald Trump, can confirm a justice. Like, I don't know if that's possible. Is it within the realm of possibility to where Mitch McConnell can find some way to make that happen? I feel like it's possible. Who knows? Maybe there are illegal ramifications to that. I don't know. But what I do know is that there's nothing off the table for Republicans. Nothing is off the table. They will do everything they possibly can to make sure that they fill that seat. You're not going to make an argument that's compelling enough to Mitch McConnell to get him to just unilaterally disarm from this fight. You have to fight him. And Democrats are not up to that challenge. Take a look at this interview that Nancy Pelosi did over the weekend with ABC News, George Stephanopoulos. And he asked her um, a very simple question and her response was just bizarre. On Friday, I started their early for voting the, the day that we lost but, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But to be clear, you're not taking any arrows out of your quiver. You're not ruling anything out. Good morning. Sunday morning. The, uh, the, 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 we have a responsibility. We take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. No joke. When I watched that, my reaction was, oh, my God, we're doomed. Trump's going to get this seat. Trump is going to get this seat. I just, I don't think Democrats are up to the challenge. 
So psychologically, I'm already kind of preparing myself for the likely scenario where Donald Trump fills that seat. He's already saying he's going to announce his pick this weekend, possibly Friday. Within an hour after RGB passed away, Mitch McConnell said, we will have a vote for this justice. Now, there is hope in maybe Lisa Murkowski, Murkowski, Susan Collins, Mitt Romney not voting with Republicans. There's a possibility that that happens. Am I optimistic about our chances there? Not necessarily because, I mean, even if it seems like Susan Collins is on the fence, she plays this game every single time and ends up going with Republicans. So polling right now shows that she's not in a good spot. So if she actually kind of sees the writing on the wall and she feels as if she's going to lose this election, this could be her parting gift to Republicans. It just, you know, whenever we hope for the best, whenever we feel as if maybe a couple of key votes will go our way, it just, it never seems to. And I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but I'm just trying to prepare people because I don't think Democrats understand what they have to do. Like seeing them make this argument, oh, well, don't be a hypocrite, Republicans, or you're going to look bad to the American people. The American people doesn't give a shit. Republican Party voters, they don't care if Republicans are hypocrites. They want to make sure they have a comfortable majority on the Supreme Court so they can put Roe v. Wade back up on the chopping block. So that way they can put, you know, marriage equality on the chopping block. And even if you take out all of these issues related to social justice, like all of the issues with regard to regulation, the ACA, these are the ones that I think are going to be more vulnerable, right? The ACA could straight up be gutted if we have a 6-3 majority, because it seems likely that Roberts would vote with the liberal justices to save the ACA from Trump's newest legal challenge, um, you know, assuming that he he follows what he did previously. But at the same time, if you get another conservative on there, the Affordable Care Act is gone. And as shitty as that policy is, that is millions more people who lose their insurance like that. Protections for people with pre-existing conditions, they go away immediately. So there's so much at stake, and it, it seems like already out of the gate, um, Democrats have face planted, and we need them more so than ever to fight like hell, fight like hell, use every single tool at your disposal. Does Chuck Schumer seem like he's going to be doing that? No. Do I expect him to do that? No, because he's been outmaneuvered by Mitch McConnell time and again. So, I mean, if I were Democrats, I'd be doing everything right now. But they just, they don't seem to want to fight. So look, here's the thing. This is where I'm at. I would be surprised if Trump didn't fill RGBC. I would be surprised because right now it seems like Democrats just don't have the fight in them. When I see them trying to do this campaign to honor RGB's legacy, do they honestly think that's going to suffice? Do they think Mitch McConnell is just going to have something go off in him and his heart's going to grow and think, well, you know, I should honor her legacy. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. Trump doesn't care. When Trump heard that that was her last wish, he called it fake news or something to that effect. He might have literally said fake news. They don't care. You're not going to persuade them with an argument. You have to use your procedural tools, any legislative mechanism and maneuver that you have at your disposal to block it outright. Stop trying to win them over with an argument. You're not going to win over Republicans with an argument. So um, we'll see how this plays out. But I would be surprised if Democrats successfully block this. And I really, really, really want them to prove me wrong. Like I want to stand corrected and I want to be for once, just wrong about Democrats. And I want them to defy my expectations. I really hope that's going to be the case because this isn't just like normal politics. This is like literally democracy at stake. We're looking at the Lochner era on steroids. If you want to even argue that we're not already in a Lochner era. So we'll see what happens. But I have a really bad feeling about this. And um, I hope I'm wrong. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay?